GD disclaimer, I do, do not have a, any fiscal or financial interest of, any, uh, of a product in my talk or with any companies offering grant monies for continuing dental education, medical education. I have been disclaimed. Thank you very much. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to thank uh, Pierre, uh, our past president, about helping us uh, put together the brochure and uh, the support of the IOMT uh, with oxygen, ozone, and dentistry. If you're going to venture into this area, this is a phenomenally put together brochure. Pierre was the lead uh, on this, and it turned out wonderfully, and uh, we're very proud of it, and uh, this should be in your office and a great asset, as all the brochures with IAOMT. So this is a wonderful thing, and we do appreciate that support and the information there, and your patients really appreciate that information. Well, what I want to talk today about is a little bit different approach. Um, over the last few years, uh, you know, we've always had this uh, issue associated with the term cavitation. Well, we really don't use that term anymore. That's kind of old school. We're really using the term osteonecrosis of the jaw, uh, O-J-N, or O-N-J, something along that line. I'll get my letter squared away, but that's really what we use today because it's, yes, sir. Well, we're putting a new term. It's used P-A-R-A, or repair. We're re actually repairing and use osteogenesis for repairing our bone. And you'll see why in a minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. <laughs> so this is what happens when you have friends at a meeting. They get to torture you. But I'll get him back somehow, put a little ozone in his uh, uh, knee uh, <laughs> with the rectal insufflation. And that's another story. Anyhow, um, so the issue has been with this osteonecrosis of the jaw. Has that been a real problem? The previous re uh, approaches have been dealing with uh, things like Sanum remedies, some homeopathy, and more uh, aggressively are these surgical approaches. And the problem with the surgical approaches that we're seeing over the years is that uh, you're not eliminating the infection. The infection is staying. It's impossible to eliminate infection surgically because if anybody's done these kind of jaw surgeries, and you know, I did them, you know. And the problem is, how much bone do you take away? How much bone don't you take away, okay? Are you creating a lymphatic congestion? Are you spreading the infection? Are you, and I've seen these because I get these patients from all over the place, are we mutilating these patients where, okay, I took all those teeth, I cleaned that jaw, they're still infected, and they have no teeth now and no jaw in which to restore them on. So in my background and my training, it's been integrative medicine. We like to take what we call a really a biologic approach, working with the patient's own biology, own physiology, biochemistry, anatomy, to support their health. Because listen, and you well, and I, I know, and you know, is where does healing come from? It's not from me walking up this great power, hey, uh, 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 you're healing. No, healing comes what? From the patient. And it is our job to understand the biologic, to support their own healing mechanisms and let them do the jobs. And I'll show you how that's done. Now, the premier way that we're, we've really evolved into this is really when we're dealing now with the bisphosphonate-induced osteonecrosis. When we originally started working with these bone lesions probably six, seven years ago with oxygen ozone, we thought this osteonecrosis lesion, we, at that time we called them cavitation, was a big deal. Oh, how are we going to resolve these, these infective osteonecrotic lesions? Well, by the remedies that we've used in the ozone, we realize, oh, that resolves all quick. We start to see recalcification of the bone, and we're seeing healing. Because remember, if you see bones start to recrystallize, okay, the pH has shifted, and bone cannot grow in infection. So if you see any bone growth back, you know you basically eliminate the infection radiographically. Now, the next wonderful step in this area is the use of comb beam technology. Uh, we brought an ICAD in, I'm telling you, the technology associated with that where we can actually view the dimensions of these lesions and identify them in a scientific manner, a scientific manner. In these units, they are built, these Hounsfield units, where we can actually measure specific densities in the medullary canals and in the bone. So now we have scientific evidence. We can measure changes within the bone and some influences that we're having on the body. So in reality, in these biologic models, what we want to do is understand the patient's needs, the patient's centered care, and we want to support their own natural biology on their pathways to health and well-being. 
So in the integrated biologic dental medicine, treatments are safe and effective, non-toxic, minimal to so no side effects, synergistic, synergistic with the patient's own biochemistry, physiology, and anatomy. And we want to support and enhance the patient's inherent healing mechanisms. So you have to understand the healing mechanisms within the patient, and we want to support and promote that within the patient itself, and the patient has to take responsibility for that. Okay? So part of the team is the patient. Of course, with the ultimate outcome to reach a state of, a, a state of biologic homeostasis. And what is bi biologic homeostasis? Homeostasis is the coordinated physiologic processes which maintains a steady state of the organism. We have a great advantage if we're smart enough to use it. We can use the term and use this biologic elasticity. The body has a great capacity to heal itself, to compensate, to deal with all these issues. Over time, and humanity has dealt with storms, drought, accident, predators, bodily injury, hunger, thirst, overexertion, infection, toxins. Your typical continuing education weekend, we deal with all these issues, right? Okay? But, but the body can react and action, reaction, and compensate for these. So we can use this elasticity built into our biologic system to our advantage to support health and healing. Let me go back. There we go. But interesting enough, we are made up of an incredible amount of unstable stuff. When you look at us, we're very unstable, but the unstable stuff of which we are composed of, we've really learned the trick of maintaining stability. How does a body handle all this chemistry, all these things going on to make us what wonderful beings we are today? But unfortunately, what happens is an accumulation of petty misunderstanding within our body that can throw the body off, a misstep here, a stumble there, and it can escalate to this no turning back. We free fall. And what do we call that? Disease. And in dentistry, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I always kid around with uh, my colleagues. I said, you know, physicians are great ones for killing everybody quickly. In dentistry, we just take our time. We slowly get them. But in dentistry, we're dealing constantly, you know, in the world, chemicals, solvents, infection. We live in a world of infection. This is our battle. This is our battlefield, infection. Heavy metals and environmentals. And these all contribute to the concepts, going back to Otto Warburg, where we were dealing with concepts of anaerobiosis and dysregulation of tissue, tissue not functioning correctly. So anaerobiosis, the dysregulation, is really an altered pathologic state of oxygen metabolism and, our, and water metabolism. We're not utilizing our fundamental primary nutrients correctly, oxygen and water. It's a fermentation process. We're fermenting. But importantly, beyond that, it's a downregulation of cellular metabolic function, resulting in a major de decrease in ATP production. Healthy cells, mitochondria, and Frank Schallenberg is going to talk about that tomorrow, and that's a real important lecture. We're talking about 36 ATP, normal and metabolic function, and we're dropping off the, the cliff to 2 ATP. It's a total different metabolic pathway, and environmentally and ecologically, which are an ecosystem, we start to shift our body, our body changes into this modality. Therefore, we get energy loss, energetic downregulation, and we go into an uncontrolled oxidative injury. And in dentistry, this is seen every day. There we go. So phys physiologically regulated metabolism, once again, we're running in 36, 38 uh, ATP. We deal with life, biotoxins, biocides, heavy metals, pesticides, solvents, virus, bacteria, fungus, and parasites. And it all contributes to anaerobiosis and dysregulation of tissue. So we start to think biologically, integrated biologic philosophy for infection control. We're really taking an anaerobiotic dysregulated environment and shifting it, making an ecological shift. Now, one of the most important and interesting things today, and you'll see when we get into specifically the ozone, the biozone concept, is one of the microbiologists spoke today. He spoke about, let's get the viruses, hit them with this chemical. Let's get the bacteria. Hit him with that chemical. In my simple thinking, I've always seen we're dealing with mixed infection. 
and the result of using different chemicals at different times results in side effects. Now, what about the concept of those bacteria, after you kill supposedly your viruses, you go back and kill those bacteria that contain viruses. Are you recontaminating the body? Needless to say, putting those uh, antibiotics and antivirals in and destroying your gut. Where does your immune system live? In the gut. So you create a dysbiotic gut, and your immune system will fall off that beautiful cliff. So basically what we want to do is ecologically shift the body to a more aerobic, anaerobiotic and aerobic environment and a regulated environment, which results in a harmonic ecosystem. We have to have a balanced ecosystem, which equals homeostasis and, of course, health, and whatever that word health means. Let me go back. So an infection, which is the world of dentistry, we're really seeing things or uncontrolled oxidative injury as a result of byproducts in the infected state. We see vascular lymphatic congestion. Look at periodontal disease. You see that all the time. Congestion, congestion of vascular beds and lymphatic beds. Anaerobiosis, dysregulation of tissue, non-functioning tissue or dysregulated tissue. And you're getting ecological, ecological conditions that are oxygen-hating, acid-loving microbes. And when we see this, we're seeing this anaerobiosis dysregulation, results in this oxidative vascular lymphatic congestion. It results in what? Ischemic disease. The vascular beds are shutting down. We're getting congestion and necrosis of tissue. So what we want to do is take dysregulated tissue. We want the tissue to start functioning in a very positive, healthy way. Biochemically, physiologically, even on the ground matrix level, start to re-regulate itself. And we're taking integrative biozone therapy to do that. Now, you might have heard about ozone, the wonders of it, how it kills all kinds of bugs and everything else, and it does wonderful things. You speak to our ozone users, you hear wonderful stories. But to take it to a higher level, you have to support the body's own basic mechanisms. And this is where this comes from, to get a better outcome on your patients. And this is, has to be done when you're dealing with bisphosphonates. Because we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. I've been saying this for a number of years. Let me tell you something. It's going to be bad news for a lot of people. And remember, and this is what is important, and this is where we can really step forward as a profession, we're realizing, and it's in the literature, that the human body is really an open ecosystem. When we think about anatomy and everything else, we try to put little pieces together, but the body knows, doesn't know pieces. It knows itself as a whole thing. And if you do not think, and we know this for a fact today, if you have an infection or a focus of infection in your head and neck, first of all, it's not in a simple focus sitting in your jaw. That infection is everywhere in your head and neck and throughout your whole body. So if you try to focus down and try to treat one little piece at one particular time, you're doing a disservice to yourself and the patient. Partial treatments, partial results. You have to take a more open, broad view. We're seeing this in all of the implications associated with the uh, expansion of the infections in the body. Keep on hitting this thing a little bit too hard. Okay, beautiful. All right. So integrated biozone therapy fits well into the criteria for integrated biologic dentistry. We're trying to define what biologic dentistry is, and this is what we're developing a new group trying to, you know, with then the confines of everybody at IOMT is what is biologic dentistry? I don't know. You can get 10 people in the room, it's defined in 10 different ways. But basically, you know, the therapies are really safe and effective, addresses dysfunction on multiple biologic levels, non-toxic as in ozone when used in a precise and calculated fashion. You don't have to use these things for a brief period of time until the, the patient's own biology comes, overcomes its blockades, induces biologic re-regulation at the tissue and cellular level, blocks infection, improves oxygen delivery to anoxic tissue, upregulates the humoral antioxidant system, and re-equilibrates the metabolic energetic pathways, getting the AP, ATP functioning right, get out of the fermentation cycle, and supporting the patient's recovery. So the anti-infective properties of integrated biozone therapy, these are things we know scientifically. It's a bactericide, fungicide, and we can get parasites too. We can kill those little intamoebas running around if we look at it in a bigger picture. This is what you typically see 
and osteonecrosis of the jaw, bisphosphonate induced. We're seeing more and more of these. Let me explain this. There we go. As you well know, the biggest issue that's been going on for the last number of years is supposedly the IV protocols with Zometa that seed the bone, lay down the bisphosphonate into the bone, the osteoclastic cell goes down to the bone, eats, try to do his normal metabolic activity, eats and poison and kill. So the basic concept we find his bisphosphonate, which was originally developed as a chemotherapeutic agent, is let's create denser bone by killing the population of the osteoclast. So the osteocytes that are encased within the bone continue making bone because they're not relieved and taken out. They slowly die. And what winds up ultimately is an old brittle skeleton. Remember, we may think bone is very rigid, but it's not. It has a very, you know, it has flexibility. It has to bend. There's a lot of structural things going on. But if it doesn't have the normal ecology of the bone, in this particular case, you're killing an entire half the population of the bone cells, okay, you're going to wind up with these where you're seeing these spontaneous fractures, uh, a lot more uh, jaw injuries. And in this particular case, this was a case of a uh, Zometa. The gentleman had prostate cancer, had Zometa. Uh, he went to the doctor, had a uh, dentist, had a tooth extracted. Um, fine, no problem, came right out, great. Went back a week later, he was getting pain and soreness and pus and everything else coming out of the uh, extraction site. So what do you think it is? He thinks like a dry socket. So you go in there, clean it up a little bit. Well, another week later, went back again. No improvement. The doc, not knowing these things, went there, cleaned it again. So no improvement. It kind of got worse. Give him antibiotics, not doing a thing. Went back the third time. So what do you do as a general dentist? Refer it to the oral surgeon. So goes to the oral surgeon. What does an oral surgeon do? Well, this looks like a dry socket. I think I'll flap it back and really clean it out. Disaster. You don't touch these lesions. And I'll explain why. You don't touch them. This is where the concept of supporting these patients healing is critical. So the result, of course, was massive necrosis of the maxilla. You can see here, this is a large hunk of uh, osteonecrotic bone. Uh, and you can see here, this is where the uh, well, in this area, this is probably where its second molar, first molar bicuspids were at one particular time. The jaw sequentially started to rot, and what happens, you get de-epithelialization of the tissue and dysregulation. The tissue isn't functioning properly and cannot heal. Epithelium can't grow over dead bone. You're dealing with massive dead bone. So as I've came to learn and work with these patients more and more, we support the patient. Uh, we, we do... Uh, what's we call cytoprotective therapy, supporting surrounding the, uh, the lesions with oxygen ozone, uh, with procaine, some B12, some homeopathics to help support the healthy tissue and allow the healing process to go on. We do nutritional support, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But interesting enough, what's been going on is that the oral surgical community, which everybody seems to be flocking to, their position is do nothing and put them on Paradex for life. It doesn't work. There is a sequence of events that if you support the patient properly, you can get healing. So what we see here is really where you have the maxilla, maxillary bone coming out. Uh, this eventually hunk came out, and the body actually cleaves. If you support the tissue, the body will cleave it and almost push this tissue, this bony tissue out. And you can see here, this bone was all taken out. I'll give you a nice close-up in a second, give you a better idea the situation where if you can flick it out with an explorer point, that's when you can take it out of the soft tissue. Anything else, you don't. It's the first time this ever happened to me, and I've been getting seeing more and more of these patients with the work we're doing. It's the first time I'm working, you know, doing all our little ozone, all the kind of tricks we teach in the course, how to manage these cases. And I'm up there irrigating out with ozonated water, and it's like, did that bone just move? And I'm like, you know, you get that little, nah. I go back, no. Nah. That, that bone moved. Like, holy cow, what's going on? And I'm tickling it, and it was a, you know, large track like you'd see there. And the bone just flicked out. A big hunk of black bone came out of the guy's jaw. Well, 
It turned out to be a good thing because I didn't realize at that point with the body's innate intelligence, okay, the things we were doing was actually pushing the garbage out. With that, the epithelium reposed itself and he healed and sealed. And that's why when we were doing these osteonecrotic infective osteonecrosis of the jaw, these things were resolving pretty well on the comprehensive protocols that we have because it was easy to treat these infections that are in kind of in a closed system versus this is open to the oral cavity and everything else that goes on in there. Reinfection, 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 where at least in these lesions recognized within the, uh, the, the, the jaws, we can just put a, a, uh, a trepidization uh, instrument in through there, which I'll show you, and treat it locally. Here is a different ball game. This is true management and support of the patient. So we take a little closer look, and this is what's coming out of these people's heads. Can anybody recognize what this bone is all about anatomically? Now this is if you're on a battlefield and you have combat out there, this is what it smells like, death warmed over. This is a maxilla. This is the floor of his maxillary sinus. Okay? And this is only the main hunk, and there's other pieces here that came out of this poor guy's head. This is commonly being seen more and more. And this is what we're dealing with. And nobody wants to deal with it. But the beauty of it is, if you formulate things right and think biologically and supportive of the patient, oops, and think about the model, and think about a little bit differently on your uh, approach to the, dent to, uh, to the patient, where you have integrated biologic dental medicine, you bring in hydration, nutrition, oxygen, ozone, you detoxify, you did drainage going, you're underpinning with naturopathic concepts, allopathic, and don't rule out natural you know, allopathic medicine. We need the support of all these. But on the integrated model, you have all the, all the medicine, all the approaches of medicine on one playing field, and you pull in to cent patient central care. You put this all together for osteonecrosis without surgically intervening, and you get healing of these wounds. Now, this was that defect that you saw before, where we have healthy now epithelium over overgrowing the tissue and sealing this up and getting nice pink healthy tissue. The anatomic defect is there, but it's not an open. This was uh, this, the, described by a ENT as a super infection, which we resolved. No antibiotics. Why wouldn't antibiotics work on this? No circulation. No circulation. But we know what's important about using oxygen ozone, one of the key elements Dr. Harris said, which was critical, because during these super infections and infection in general, what happens? The vascular beds do what? They close down. But introducing oxygen ozone into the area, what it does, produce nitric oxide. It opens up those vascular beds again. That's why it reacts so well in perio. It opens up the vascular and lymphatic channels and allows for normal physiology and maintenance. So you're talking about taking a situation from here into this horrendous mess, supporting the patient from dysregulation tissue, or dysregulated tissue, not functioning properly on multiple levels, treating it, supporting it, and winding up with healing. This was said to be impossible not long ago. But in these cases, you have to be patient and support the patient. And do not go up there and yank on that bone. You have to let it go as natural sequence, a natural order, it's natural biology, the patient, and then you will get healing. I never thought this was possible because I didn't know what I was doing. I tell all these patients, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where the outcome on these things are. But they're all dumped in this wasteland, and they don't have any treatments. Go home and rinse for life. And you're seeing this on, on uh, patients that have no dentition. You, you know, pr uh, denture pressure points turn into discrimination of epithelium off dead bone. And if that tissue is not supported properly, it will just continue and progress. People are literally losing their jaws. In this case, this gentleman lost basically half his maxilla and went on progressing 
if we weren't lucky enough to say, listen, let's step back. We can't think in an allopathic kind of way. We have to kind of reach into all the bag of goodies and support it on a biologic level. And ultimately, it points down to the real bottom line is patient-centered care where you bring all these miles together and you have the patient in the middle, so you're supporting them. You might recognize this gentleman. He needs a lot of support, trust me. And that's, that's my good son right there. Okay. Can't hold the trigger on that. So what you have to do is really think about when you're trying to get pathways to wellness, and this applies beyond dealing with osteonecrosis, et cetera. You, know, you have to repair, restore, and renew. And that applies for it's just a general philosophy for wellness, from the GI tract, the whole body, all the way up through the jaws and out. We repair, restore, renew. I think the three R's used to be arithmetic and something else. I think we, we shifted that now, repair, restore, renew. So an integrated biologic philosophy of head and neck infection control, biozone therapy, we start slow and low. You just support, start to move them biologically along. You support, support, support. Don't throw a nuclear bomb in. It won't work. You support the healthy tissue. You reduce the infective titer in the head. When we deal with these particular patients, and some of our students have taken on the advanced course, the course, we really deal with the first phase of our treatments for these really osteonecrotic lesions is really cleaning up soft tissue. The first few weeks is really spent injecting soft tissue in particular areas that will be picked up by the vascularity and carry through the whole head and neck. So we can develop what's called a biologic gradient because, listen, anybody who's ever studied the concept of osteopathy, you know, A.T. Still, what rules supreme? The artery rules supreme. What does that mean? You got to get good blow flow in. But at the same time, you got to do what? Get blood flow out. The same thing with lymphatics. Good lymphatics in, good lymphatics out. So you have to develop biologic gradients so you get health and restoration of the tissues. We initial foundation therapies, and we'll show you that in a minute. Clear pathways of draining. You have to drain out. You got to clean your body out. And what are the pathways of drainage? We poop, we pee, we sweat, and breathe. Those are some of the fundamental ones. And of course, before we go into these foci of infection, before we do that, we want to have drainage. We want the patient draining and functioning as best they can, and then go into these real focused areas of infection. Because if you go into these areas of focus of infection immediately, try to knock these infections out, it has no place to go. The byproducts of your killing these bugs get congested, backed up, and you get reinfected. And this is why these surgical procedures have, have failed. I've been lecturing for years saying, listen, if you're going to do these surgeries, take the jaw bones out, all that kind of stuff, put them on lymphatic drainage remedies. Make sure their hydration is right. Make sure the gut's functioning right. Because if you clean it all out, they're going to become congested, the lymphatics are not going to drain properly, and what's going to happen? They're going to be reinfected, or the infection is going to respread back. We have a surgeon uh, out in Santa Rosa. Bob Jarvis is doing a lot of work. Uh, with us on bisphosphonates, doing great. In some of the cases, what he's done is he's actually what we call preconditioning using ozone. We've cleaned up the soft tissue, go in there, inject the ozone into these, even these infective osteonecrotic lesions. And then what he does is opens them up and just teases a little, a little chunk out, deep bulks it, and they heal up beautifully. Not these massive, uh, you know, dentition and jaw removals. Now, if there's any jaw cavitation guys out there, forgive me, but I've got to tell you the truth. Get it. So with hydration, nutrition, function, we fold into this our ozone therapies, nasal and ear insufflation, pterygoid plexus. We're using anatomy to deliver the oxygen ozone and lymphatic drainage, clearing the road, developing a biologic gradient. Some of the simple therapies we use in oxygen ozone therapy is nasal and ear insufflation. We actually bubble oxygen ozone through olive oil, which changes it to a, what's called a triozonide, and you can breathe it. It's amazing for clearing out sinuses, respiratory tract infections, and a generalized whole body treatment. Simple thing. I can tell you how many patients had nasal infections. They're going to get the, uh, the, the uh, deviated septum special. We put them on this, a little neti pot, simple little things. It's amazing what can come out of your head. 
Another simple thing is using ear insufflation, putting ozone to the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane on the moisturized oxygen ozone is absorbed. It's a wonderful whole body therapy. This is how I was exposed to it the first time. The guy wanted to put stethoscopes with ozone in my ear. I thought he was nuts. That's after we did ear candling, if you know what I'm talking about, ear candles. You know, lighting candles hanging out of your head. That's interesting with ozone. I thought it was insane. But you know what? It works. <clears throat> Knowing the biophysics of oxygen ozone, we know that it goes instantly into solution when, in, when in, in injected into a biologic system, the plasmatic fluids or blood. Here we're doing a technique where we're doing, a very, which is very similar to a superior alveolar infusion. We're dropping about five or six cc's up into that particular area. It goes into solutions, being picked up by what's called the turgoid plexus of veins and distributed through the whole head and neck. It's like doing an IV for the whole body and it's distributed. So all those infective states, all those little bugs that are running around in between your fascial planes, we can clean up gently in that area. And all the uh, physiology associated uh, with ozone therapy. And this is where the injection would go. There's an external approach, but I don't want to scare anybody, so we'll do the internal approach to that. And you can see here we took a butterfly, just place it behind that third molar up in the uh, maxilla. Blue little ozone up there is distributed throughout the entire head and neck. It's an amazing treatment. Using, you know, supporting the cervical chain procedures. Anybody realize how bad tonsils are infected even if you don't have them? Those are problematic. Anybody has neural therapy, you have to treat those tonsils. Anybody that has these infections in their head or these osteonecrotic lesions, if you don't treat the tonsils, you can't get anywhere. What's so important about the tonsils? Well, it begins the first chain of lymphatics. And yet you know that the first galt associated lymphoid tissue is what? The tonsils. Everybody know what galt is? Good associated lymphoid tissue. So you're influencing the immune system by treating the tonsils. And tonsils are usually infected on a low grade. So we, we address the lymphatics. Nice, beautiful set of tonsils. We treat the lymphatic chain, drop a little ozone, like Bob was talking about earlier, about doing subdermal injections. Drop a little CC along these chains. It's absorbed, and it helps support drainage in the head and neck. Infective osteonecrosis of the jaw. We thought that was a big deal. These are some of these lesions that you see. You can see those radiographically. In here with the uh, 3D comb beam, you can really visualize these things in a very interesting, amazing way. Adds new light to it. But the problems we're dealing with is infection, and we're seeing infection. Lesions on the bridge, old bad extractions. You know, when did, was this extraction done? Ten years ago. Chronically infected root canals, lesions all over. And if you don't think that wears you down immunologically, it does. So one of the greatest little uh, tools we came across years ago was the X-tip. It was originally designed for an anesthetic approach, but now it fits perfectly a 27-gauge half-inch needle so we could deliver our ozone directly into bone without any problem at all. And this is how we would approach going into the maxilla with the X-tip in position and the osteonecrotic lesion, effective osteonecrotic lesion. And then we would deliver direct ozone gas, knowing on the physics, once again, that it goes right into solution. These areas, if there is an avascular issue, once again, we go back to the basic science. It will open up those vascular beds. Once we get vascular bed flowing back in, then we can get healing. Kill the bugs, get immunologic recognition, and all those wonderful biologic treatments that you want to do are helping heal those lesions. You know, we talk about uh, Bob Jones, and everybody familiar with the Cavitat? A number of years ago, I was lecturing uh, to the uh, IAOMT uh, group in England. We're in London, and Bob Jones was there. And uh, the Cavitat was kind of originally designed to support the surgical concept with um, the cavitations. And it's interesting what Bob said to me about the cavity. He says, you know, the damnedest thing about this ozone is that once you inject that ozone in that jawbone, it fills up a blood and I can't get a good reading. I says, Bob, that's called healing. That's exactly what we want. We want the blood to open up, refill in, start to flow, and now allow for natural healing of these lesions. 
So here I just want to show you we're replacing some tips on uh, toxic root canals that are producing you know, toxins. We can treat those. Especially we love root canals that have fistula tracts. It's fantastic. I don't have to use a, a trepanization tool like the X-tip. And we have set protocols on how to treat old root canals that cannot be retreated. Now, what is the problem with root canals? Does everybody understand the problem with root canals? It's not the main canal, by the way. It's all the tubules, as Steve Coral can uh, tell you, that it's the tubules and the lateral canals that are the problem. But we develop techniques to fumigate these things and make them as safe as possible. Maybe it's not 100%. I don't know if anything is, but we sure are able to keep some teeth in people's head and, and uh, not worry about poisoning them. And of course, these are typical extraction sites. When were these done? 10 years ago? Now, doing oxygenosome, we see bony stuff coming back in. Sometimes it's not 100% like, wow, it was never was an extraction there. But once again, physiologically, we've seen over time, and we watch these things, if we see recrystallization of the bone, that means the positively charged area is changed and allowing for the remineralization of the organic matrix. What happens when you're getting a lesion like this that's not healing correctly. Let's even in a periapical abscess, it is what? Very positively charged, correct? It's acidic. Ozone is the, one of the only gas and oxygen that carries a negative electric charge. It's sucked right into these areas and changes. It will shift the pH. You know, phosphate, calcium, all those minerals that can remineralize to create the hydroxyapatite crystals are what charge? What charge do they carry? They carry a positive charge. So how can positively charged elements come into a positively charged lesion? Impossible. So we shift the pH, reduce the uh, acids, get the infection out. It will change. The pH will elevate. And that's when you start to see recrystallization, where those minerals can start to flow in. And that's an indication of healing. In bone grafting, not that I know of. We're seeing bone regrowth using uh, oxygen ozone. And we have a lot of pictures of that, but I don't have time for that today, unfortunately, which is cool. Any other questions? Good. So this is where we see these edentulous ridges that we had extractions done. Those are great areas to put little X-tips. They slide right in. If anybody's done these kind of uh, osteonecrotic lesions, sometimes those tips go in and they fall right out. That's when you just take your little 30-gauge needle, go in there, put a little ozone in there, and rectify the lesions. Once again, Edentulus Ridge. And going into these extraction areas, it's just amazing how, how long these extractions have been sitting around for years and have never been treated properly. Those we really set up for about 10 times, 10, 11 times, up to 12. Well, we used to do them once a week, but what we're doing now is we're actually doing it once a week for the first three weeks to precondition the patient. Then we accelerate it for three weeks at twice a week, and then we wean them out on the other side, and then we let them heal up. And that's it. So we've really used to actually initially try an old different type of techniques. We used to have them once a week for 12 weeks. Well, we condensed that back, and we've actually kind of almost developed a bell curve on this. We're preconditioned the patient, then bring them through a kind of a push hard uh, the treatment phase and then wean them back out the other side and then let them heal. That's on the ozone level. And then we support them nutritionally, drainage-wise, and otherwise on that. Hmm? Want me to repeat it? I got to repeat that. I just made that up now. <laughs> uh, let's say, well, the, yeah, once a week for the first three weeks, okay, to precondition all the tissue. And then we see them twice a week for about three, four weeks. And then we wean them out on the other end like once a week again. So you bring them in, precondition them because, listen, a lot of this, the ozone is so reactive with some of these patients and they're so sick, is that what you don't want to push them into is what? Kill things too much, too quickly is what? Herxheimer reaction. You don't want to do that. You don't have to do that to get where you have to go. So you pre do a preconditioning phase, a little push phase, and then you wean them out the other side and leave them alone. Well, when I make up the cocktails, these cytoprotective cocktails, we're using procaine, 3%, uh, buffered, no preservatives. We're folding in uh, B12, methylcobalamin, folic acid, and then I'm using heal remedies, Tremil, Zeal, 
uh, lymph myosot. I fold that right into the cocktail. One of the more important things in direct lymphatic drainage is heals uh, lymph myosot. Lymph myosot. It's a fantastic drainage remedy. You fold right at that in. And then in addition, I use uh, German drainage remedies like uh, lympho nest to get the whole lymphatic system running. And of course, you know, the, you know what the bottom line is? The best thing is hydration. Get them drinking. If they're dehydrated, no good. Yes. You're attacking on, uh, on that approach. And what's important is hydration to get things functioning properly. Hydration formulas, simple things, body weight divided by two. That's how many ounces a day they should be drinking, theoretically. But the trick, more importantly, is that what you don't want your patients to do is try to down a glass of water. i got to get my eight glasses in, so I'm sitting there pounding it because you'll pee it right out. You have to have them know the trick is, really, for hydration therapy, is sipping water all day long. Just sip away. And that will get, you know, that will be the greatest detox. Because detoxification, you know, water is what? The greatest what? Solvent. That's our solvent in our body is water. And the only way to get the goop out is through wash it out. You've got to wash it out from the inside out. So all these other factors you're dealing with, you know, with the procaine, what you're trying to do is restabilize membranes. Procaine carries the same electrical potential as resting membrane of, cell, of a normal functional cell, about 90 um, millivolts or microvolts. So, so what you're trying to do with the procaine is you get a little anesthetic effect, but you're also trying to stabilize the hyperactivity of the cell membranes in the area. So you're going to quiet that down so you get some better cell membrane function then support the oxygen uh, and oxidative stress by using the B12 and folic acid because that potentiates oxygen metabolism. Then the tremeal and zeal and those added different special kind of, you know, homeopathic nutrients through and lymphatic and lymphatic drainage remedies drain out the lymphatics when you start to clean out the debris and get the kill off. Right. Yeah, so I'm really dual using the procaine. Uh, that's why I brought it up to 3%. If I was doing, you know, strictly kind of neural therapy, et cetera, I'd be down like 1%, maybe 2 But I want to get the effect of procaine, but I also want to get a little anesthetic effect so I can drop in that, um, that ozone without getting any kind of burning sensation out of that. And what's important also in the beginning, what Bob was talking about was really slick. And uh, Lumberto Ray is, is a molecular pharmacologist, you know, world-renowned in this. And this is when he came up with all these different physiologic responses. So now we can take ozone at 10 micrograms per cc, okay, 10 micrograms per cc, inject in his area, and I can induce a true vascular response, open up vascular beds to get the ischemic osteonecrosis underway in healing. So now we're coming in sophisticated enough where we can actually induce those physiologic effects that are supportive you know, I get some vascular flow going, then I can get some, you know, antioxidant support with these patients. And you use your clinical judgment in, in the concepts that we spend a lot more time on, on supporting these patients. But the trick is, I mean, we used to go very high on ozone years ago. Ten minutes? Okay, we got a good time. But now we get a little more sophisticated. Ozone bringing it all the way down. Now we're really getting a little more sophisticated. We're getting the, you know, the effect on killing bugs, but we're also able to, manipulate the system where we're getting better blood flow to the areas. And this is where we're getting the healing of these lesions. Well, first of all, it just breaks down to, you know, the metabolic byproduct of procaine is two B, B vitamins, Pava GABA. Okay, that's great. There's nothing toxic about it. But number two, like I said before, the reason we're using procaine is to restabilize all the hyperactivity on the cell membranes because these, these, these cells are dysregulated. They're trying to overcompensate for the toxins and the infection in the area, so you want to calm the system down. And so by putting the procaine in there, you restabilize because everything is based on electricity. Pishner's work, you know, everything, you know, you, you want to stabilize these membranes, and you have the, you're using the procaine to do that, quiet it all down so they can start, start to function metabolically better and induce healing effects. Okay. Well, I have a real trigger finger on this thing. Anyhow, another lesion you find between toxic root canals, we replace the x tip So this x tip has been a real wonder for us on uh, getting these lesions cleaned up. 
Once again, we place these X tips all over the place to uh, get in there. But we're also taking advantage, look at the large lesion here. We're also taking advantage of uh, the blood supplies. When you think about your anatomy, once again, I mean, one of the greatest things on draining root canals is also in addition to fumigating the tooth, and this is how we do that. I know Rich is here. You love that term fumigation of root canals because he got upset. Oh, it's fumigation, so aggressive. But that's what we're doing. We've got to fumigate these root canals, okay, is use the blood supply. I mean, we take some ozone and put it back by the inferior alveolar, drop a cc there, it goes in the solution, picked up by the neurovascular bundle, and dragged through the whole jaw. So these are a little bit more... Uh, invasive techniques versus our other techniques with perio, etc. But they are, in these particular cases, critically important. You can't go and dig this bone out. You don't have to. And this is the real brief today, guys. Sorry. And what's really cool, we put these little tips up there into these uh, little avascular areas, treat them. You don't know there. You see them radiographically. Now we can image them and measure them with the cone beam technology. And we see, you know, we got the port inside. You, you even see amalgam still inside these, uh, these little uh, areas. Once again, going to edentulous ridge. Putting, you know, we're using butterflies at that particular point. There we go. And once again, this is the classic third molar area where you're seeing where we're going into these and the X-tip drops in. The cannula stops here, and we use a 27-gauge butterfly, and it falls beyond that, falls right into the lesion, and we treat it that way and expel the oxygen ozone directly in there. But some of the slick tricks is that we do, once we uh, do the treatment, you'll see all of a sudden these tips are in there. You put the ozone in there. All of a sudden, this blood and goop starts to come up out of the tip. We collect all that stuff. We collect any gauze, anything. We take it, and this is another biologic trick. We actually take it into what's called an inverter. We take the energy, the information from that tip, which all the bugs and everything else is in there, invert it in a frequency, and put it into a homeopathic remedy that is now specifically designed for that patient. The patient's information on that infection is now in place into that lymphatic drainage remedy. That from Marco Farm and Lympho Nest, we can take that information and print it in there in a homeopathic remedy that's specific to that patient. Now you're thinking like, woohoo! But if you understand the science, it actually really works and it's very slick, especially on perio disease. If you're having a refractory case and we do uh, you know, trays and everything else, but you can collect some of that goop and put it, invert it into a specific, uh, let's say, uh, a periodontal no soda of whatever form you like to use, and print that specific infection into that, and that really supports information because it, what it is is information to educate your immune system specifically go after that infection. Because these, you know, these bugs are really smart. They talk to each other. We're down to five? Okay, good. They talk to each other. They share a common language, the language of cytokines. So they're smart. They find a great place to live. Tell everybody, come on, move in. We're going to have a great time. But now we can gather that information, re-educate. They build up defense shields and everything else, educate the immune system, and go in there and break that up. And I spoke, I guess, a year or two ago. We talked about perio. And the biggest problem with perio is the bugs are one thing, but the biofilm is the other. A bacterium is a 1,000 times more resistant to antibiotic therapy in a biofilm versus not. This is just known scientific fact. But the beauty of oxygen ozone is that we know scientifically, okay, that the oxygen ozone actually breaks up and dissolves biofilm and gets down to the bugs themselves, which is significant in the infective world of dentistry. So this is kind of like a real sweeping talk on what we do. But the most important thing, and we have to elevate our consciousness, is really the oral systemic link. And this really, technically, kind of expands our scope of practice and our understanding of biologic dentistry. Where how much do we know? Well, we're knowing more and more every day and the implications of the head and neck infections. And we do have ways of controlling it because antibiotics, all these things are falling off the face of the earth. You know, now they have MRSA, they have VERSA, I don't know, we're going to get maybe reversa. I don't know. But the reality is we have to take different looks. And, you know, in the toxicology world, I can't think of any worse toxins than uh, mercury and bisphosphonates and what it's going to reap upon us. There are millions of prescriptions written every year. 
I guess when we started looking at these things, I forgot how many millions of uh, prescriptions written for uh, Boniv and Fosamax. It was five million a year, six million a year. And the issue with these bisphosphonates is really that with the IVs, it salts the bones so very, very quickly. But now you're having women that are on the bisphosphonates for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And the IDA just came out with an article that now they're saying, well, from it's not a problem to maybe 4% of the population, there's going to be osteonecrotic lesions associated with the oral cavity. So if it's now we're starting to see 4%, and in the beginning, when they talked about Zometa, it was maybe, hmm, well, maybe 1%. Now it's up to maybe 20% or more in some of these studies coming out as far as you're seeing these lesions coming out. So take your millions, and even if it's, you know, 4% of millions, uh, what are we dealing with? And where is the problem going to go? It's going to go right into our lap, and we have to try to remediate it. You can't cure it, but you can support the patient's own inherent innate healing system if you think biologically, like we all claim to be biologic dentists, think biologically, support their own healing mechanism, and then we, you know, hopefully we'll get some better results. So kind of put the pieces together, you know, think about biologics, oxygen ozone infec infection, cytoprotection therapies, blending all these pieces together to hopefully get a, you know, a real, real positive uh, outcome. And, you know, the task of uh, integrative dental medicine is maintaining the individual spontaneity of molecular interactions within the framework of uh, homeostasis. And as you can see, I'm out of time. And